Are you tired of that dreaded phrase, but it works on my machine? Or maybe you've spent hours, even days, setting up the exact right environment and dependencies just to run a project someone else shared. What if I told you there's a way to package your applications, along with everything they need to run, into a neat little box that works reliably anywhere, on your laptop, on your colleague's machine, or even on servers in the cloud? Welcome back to CodeOps HQ. In today's video, we're diving into Docker, the powerful containerization tool that simplifies development, deployment, and scaling of applications. Whether you're new to Docker or looking to brush up on best practices, this video will guide you step by step through its core concepts, installation, and practical usage. By the end of this tutorial, you'll understand how Docker can streamline your workflow and make deployment a breeze. So, what is Docker? Imagine you're shipping goods across the ocean. You wouldn't just throw them onto the ship, right? You put them in standardized shipping containers. They protect the goods and can be easily loaded, unloaded, and stacked on any ship or truck designed for them. Docker does the same thing, but for software. It lets you package your application code, along with its runtime, like Python or Node.js, system tools, libraries, and configuration, everything it needs, into a standardized unit called a container. Why is this so powerful? It solves major headaches, like consistency, dependency management, simplified setup, and efficiency. If it runs in a Docker container, it will run consistently across different environments, development, testing, production. No more installing specific versions of libraries directly on your system or dealing with conflicts between projects. Dependencies are isolated inside the container. New team members can get a complex application running with just a couple of Docker commands, instead of following lengthy setup guides. It allows for faster development cycles and easier deployment. This means you can develop on one machine, run exactly the same environment in production, and scale out rapidly when needed. You might be thinking, isn't this like a virtual machine? Yes and no. They both provide isolation, but they work very differently. A virtual machine bundles a full operating system. It needs a hypervisor to virtualize the actual hardware. This makes VMs quite large, slower to boot, and they consume more resources, like RAM and CPU. A Docker container, on the other hand, virtualizes the operating system. Containers share the host system's OS kernel. They only package the application code and its dependencies. This makes them incredibly lightweight, fast to start, and much more resource efficient. Think of it this way, VMs virtualize hardware, giving you multiple OSs on one machine. Containers virtualize the OS, letting you run multiple applications isolated on one OS. If you're serious about becoming a better developer, you need to sharpen how you think. Brilliant's Thinking in Code course is perfect for that. It teaches you how to break down complex problems, design efficient algorithms, and write clean, elegant code, all through real-world examples and interactive lessons. Whether you're debugging tricky logic or architecting a brand new feature, Thinking in Code will help you level up your problem-solving mindset. Or, you can explore any of Brilliant's other amazing courses in programming, data analysis, science, logical reasoning, math, and technology, all designed to help you build practical skills that stick. And the best part? If you sign up using the link in the description or brilliant.org slash codeopshq, you'll get one month of free access, plus 20% off an annual premium subscription. A huge thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and supporting our channel. To begin using Docker, we need to install it. First we need to add Docker repo to our package manager, then install it. For more information check out Docker Docs. Once installed, start the Docker service. Then if you want you can enable it to run at startup. Finally, verify the installation by checking the Docker version. Let's ensure Docker is working correctly by running the hello world test container. This command pulls a test image from Docker Hub and runs it in a container. If you see the output hello from Docker, it means Docker is set up correctly. By default, 
Docker requires root privileges. To simplify its usage, let's add our user to the Docker group. Log out and back in, or refresh your session. Test the configuration. First, let's grab an image from Docker Hub. Docker Hub is a public registry of thousands of community and official images. To pull the official Nginx image, run the Docker pull Nginx. You'll see layers download one by one. Once complete, confirm with Docker images. Here's our Nginx image, ready to run. To start a container from that image, use Docker Run. Let's run Nginx in detached mode, map port 80 on the host, to port 80 in the container, and give it a name. Now Docker PS shows our running container. Visit localhost in your browser, and you'll see the default Nginx page. To view logs, use Docker Logs. To attach a shell inside the running container, use docker exec it then name of the container then the shell. When you're done, stop the container gracefully by using docker stop. If you want to restart it later, use docker start web server. To remove the container entirely, use docker rm web server. You can also combine stop plus remove in one shot by using the F flag in Docker RM to force it. Now that we're comfortable running and managing containers, let's package our Rust U web app. We'll write a Docker file that uses Nginx to serve the compiled front end assets. In your project directory, create a file named Dockerfile with the following content. First, we specify our base image with from. Docker will pull Nginx Alpine, an official Nginx build on minimal Alpine Linux, and build our image on top of that. Next, we use run to execute build time commands. Here, we update Alpine's package list and install curl without caching, keeping the final image small. Then, copy moves our custom Nginx configuration into the container, replacing the default server settings with our own. We use workdir to change the current directory inside the image to Nginx document root. All subsequent commands run from here. Now we copy the compiled U frontend, the dist folder, into Nginx web root so it will serve our static files. We declare expose 80 to document that the container listens on HTTP port 80. When running, we'll map this to a host port with dash p8080. Entry point defines the primary executable that runs whenever the container starts. Here, it runs the Nginx binary every time, ensuring our web server is launched. Because entry point is not overridden by default, Nginx will always be the first process executed in the container. Finally, CMD specifies the default command for the container, here it provides default arguments to our entry point. We pass dash g daemon off, so nginx runs in the foreground, keeping the container alive. If you run docker run without extra arguments, docker will effectively execute the default argument. You can still override CMD at runtime by appending different options. This Docker file does four things, it starts from Nginx on Alpine Linux, injects your custom server configuration, copies the static files generated by your U build into Nginx web root, exposes port 80, and tells Nginx to run in the foreground. Next up, we'll build and tag this image so you can deploy it anywhere. To build your custom image, run docker build. Here, dash t tags the image with your Docker Hub username, image name, and version. Once built, confirm with Docker images, you'll see your image ready to run. Now that our image is ready, let's push it to Docker Hub so we can share it anywhere or deploy it remotely. Before pushing our image, we should log into Docker Hub from our terminal. 
When you run Docker login, Docker may prompt you with a browser-based authentication flow. Just follow the instructions, it'll open a URL and ask you to enter a one-time code. Once authenticated, you're ready to push. We use Docker Push to upload it. After it's done, you'll be able to see it listed on your Docker Hub profile, ready to be pulled and deployed from anywhere. And that's a wrap on our Docker tutorial. Today, we learned the basics of Docker, what it is, how to install it, how to build an image, run containers, manage containers, and upload our image to Docker Hub. Docker revolutionizes development by containerizing your applications, ensuring consistency across all environments. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to CodeOps HQ, and leave a comment below with your Docker experiences or any questions you have. Stay tuned for more in-depth tutorials on containerization and other tech topics. Thanks for watching.